Thank you everyone for coming to this talk. Thanks for the organizers again for having me this year. It's really great to see how Adcon evolves. Sorry for the technical blunder with the display here. I'm Silor and this year again I brought you an independent topic named Zero Knowledge and Account Abstraction, Hybrid Web 2 and Web 3 Applications Need Hybrid Privacy. So I'm Silur, I'm a post-quantum cryptography researcher and an independent developer working on a plethora of uh, projects in the ecosystem. I also co-founded a couple of my own startups. Uh, I publish uh, cryptographic papers and I implement some of the novel ideas from varied labs in the ecosystem too. On the agenda, we have uh, the necessity and the novelty of smart wallets, so a little history on them then comparing the two most popular versions of how we do or did account abstraction, namely delegating and the current version uh, that rules account abstraction, then why the second version won exactly, in my opinion, then I'm gonna present the most popular uh, developer SDK approaches that I've seen as a developer when I'm working with account abstraction, and then I'm gonna list some case studies how they can be combined with uh, zero knowledge technology to bring hybrid web to privacy into these new uh, use cases. So smart contract wallets per se are nothing new really. We, uh, we realized immediately with the capability of smart uh, contract wallets and smart contracts uh, themselves that they can drive wallet interactions too, acting as a proxy. The standardization was the thing that was really lacking in the whole uh, ecosystem. So how do you integrate them? How do you develop them? Uh, every project tried to tackle this problem with their own way, so interoperability was kind of non-existent, which can't go uh, being a wallet ecosystem. So what the main problem was, how do we combine the best properties of a smart contract and a wallet, an, an externally owned account. One of the approaches was EIP 3074, account delegation. It was an elegant version, but it required new opcodes added to the EVM, if you remember, and we don't really like that. It's a little hassle to introduce to the network. And the second one that currently rules the ecosystem in terms of account abstraction is EIP 4337, account abstraction that has a second uh, mempool for user operations. And the amazing thing about this approach is that we finally decoupled user operations, so user interactions, intentions with the blockchain from the technical knowledge that's needed to interact with it. So now we are, uh, especially on this conference, we got used to the fact that you have to know how nonces work on the network, how the, the basics, how the consensus algorithm works. If your transaction didn't go up, then you have to search for this hash and that, but it's actually not really normal. In, a, in an IT industry that you expect so much from a user and that's exactly why all the newbies are complaining about UX issues here. And with account abstraction, why we ex expect so much from this technology? Because we finally decouple the technical knowledge and just like on an iPhone, the user only expresses its intention with the blockchain now. But this also comes with the backside. So Web3 was not uh, designed this way at the beginning in mind. And as the new providers and tooling arise that eases user interaction, it comes at a cost. Usually it's a privacy cost as we saw with uh, Facebook, Google, etc. So the major account abstracted wallet providers and the user operation executors bundler can pose some privacy uh, concerns on you. They might become the new chain oasis, but this is just a personal view. The good thing, though, is that now we have uh, Turing complete code executed on the chain that also stores our assets, and intentions are much easier to express in zero knowledge circuits than uh, having the restriction of only elliptic curve mathematics when we are operating on our assets. So we could bootstrap and piggyback new use cases or existing use cases in ZK with the new relaxed threat model, the relaxed threat assumption, that we hold our assets on something that can execute arbitrary Turing complete code. 
For this, we have two uh, most popular smart contract wallet models, at least those ones that I uh, had to work with, integrating these two clients. The newest one and the simplest one is uh, the basic owner model. What Coinbase Smart Wallet uses has been released not so long ago, and it does enjoy quite a popularity, especially, of course, on base chain. And we have the plugin version, the ERC6900 plugins, which are taking a lot from the owner model, but more standardized, and the permission system is more extensive there. So on the naive uh, owner model, it's nothing new. When we realized that instead of a, a elliptical private key holding your assets and having an address, we could have the same with a contract wallet, then you can iterate this uh, iterate this process many times. So the owner of the account abstracted wallet can be another contract or a handful of contracts that have to sign simultaneously and you have, uh, and you already have a multi-stick system. Those owner contracts could have inside the code time limits, uh, timestamps, uh, vesting logic implemented so you can't interact with your account abstracted wallet without having uh, completed these permissions in this one. So it's a super simple and elegant way to interact and Coinbase um, Smart Wallet uses this model inside their contracts on the base chain. The RC6900 model is more extensive here. It has a permission model. Uh, the all of the calls in the plugin system are standardized, which means that we can create a marketplace for such plugins in account abstracted wallets, which will be especially useful when privacy comes into the uh, equation too. So you can just download the latest, most popular privacy plugin into your model here. The permission system is uh, really well designed, so ac um, access control is, uh, enjoys a really good threat model. You explicitly have to give time-based and capability-based access um, properties to the plugins that you install here. So with these two in mind, Let's start with the case studies. The most popular one, of course, is social recovery. And chronologically, it was also the first one to be used in, uh, in account abstracted wallets. And it comes with the most uh, privacy concerns. Because, of course, the use case is that you lost your private key. Uh, too many, uh, sadly, too many private keys and uh, addresses are dormant on Ethereum because of the lost keys. So it was a, a really a gaping question that uh, needed to be answered. And with the comes abstraction, the way for social recovery is that if you could prove somehow that you are still the same person behind the computer who created the lost private key, then you could potentially recover it. It's a very general way. That's why every project tackled it in its own way. Clave was, I'm not sure if they are indeed the first ones to have a counter-extraction social recovery implemented, but they are definitely amongst the first ones. And if you use this feature, you are familiar that the way it works, that prior to the private key compromise or loss, you have to delegate um, guardians, so-called guardians from your Twitter uh, social list, social friend list, I don't even know how it's called, as I don't have Twitter. So from your friends, you have to appoint um, guardians into your wallet, which is kind of a clunky UX, if you ask me, in terms of security. Then if you indeed lost access to your account abstracted wallet, then you have to ask these guardians to attest so. And if a threshold is reached from the group, then you can assign a new uh, driver or signer K uh, under the account abstracted wallet. So everything is under the same address, all the assets are in the same smart contract, you, are just, you just have a new capability in terms of access control to sign with another private key. The more elegant way, and I think uh, the project was mentioned during this conference already, is ZK email. So very shortly how it works is that you can prove in zero knowledge using the properties of the DKIM signature system used in emails to that you received an email from support at twitter.com. But if, what's even more interesting is that you can select parts of the email 
uh, and selectively disclose them. So you can prove on-chain, and I can verify that you received a mail from support at twitter.com saying that your username requested a password forgot uh, request from them, which kind of proves that you are indeed uh, in possession of the Twitter account in question. And once I verify this proof on chain, because we have the Merkle tree of the accepted DKIM public case in uh, this project, um, then I can recover your account abstracted wallet just by your Twitter username, which you already proved that you have access to. And you can uh, use the same methodology for a plethora of uh, other social providers. Second one, an even more interesting version. You might be familiar with the use cases here, actually, because all of the winners of the startup competition uh, yesterday that, was, that were announced implemented one of these uh, case studies, uh, because I also made um, this talk in Brussels, so you might be familiar with everything that's presented here. A super underrated project we see is TLS Notary. They've been around for quite a while, actually, a little before TLS 1.3 became a well-spread standard in web technologies. Back then it was easier to use them. Now it's uh, a, z a combination of multi-party computing and zero-knowledge proofs. Kind of works the same as uh, ZK email. You can selectively disclose that the server behind the website sent you this and that content. So you go on Twitter and you want to prove on-chain how many followers you have. Then you go to your profile settings. It says how many followers do you have. And you can prove without the possibility of client-side cheating that the Twitter server having this TLS key indeed proved or said to you that you have this and that many followers. But the problem is that TLS Notary is an interactive protocol, so you can't just directly go into proving uh, TLS uh, Notary and act it, uh, make it act as an oracle for the account abstracted uh, system that we just built here. But thankfully, if you combine it, so you need another layer on top of TLS Notary, if you combine it with vector oblivious linear evaluations, then you can make a hybrid ZK snark NPC and on the whole combination another ZK snark to make it uh, Web3 compatible because uh, vector oblivious linear evaluations especially excel in interactive systems. And there are already project, the projects that are exploiting this idea. Next case study, we have ZK KYC that enjoyed quite uh, popularity in, uh, in Brussels. So both of these technologies can uh, help you go through an on-chain uh, KYC process without actually putting personal, personal identifiable information on chain. So you can prove that you are not a US citizen because some sub said so, and you are above the age of 18 because some sub said so by either selectively disclosing parts of the verification email that you received from some sub or parts of the uh, front end that your KYC provider of choice sent you after the process. The same methodology can be used for fiat gating, so not just about your identity, but about your assets. You can also express stuff based uh, on your account abstracted uh, interactions on chain. This is especially useful for real world asset tokenization, so you can go onto your bank's website, combine it with TLS Notary, and you can attest on an on chain auction, for example, that you have the necessary liquidity, which is like a protocol in uh, fiat based uh, auctions. You, you can attest that you are uh, eligible for such gating. Next, if you remember Vitalik's um, blog post about an introduction to how Stealth addresses work on Ethereum, it has a couple mentions of zero-knowledge technology combined, but not deeply uh, into detail. If you remember, you have a meta address that your sender can derive arbitrary addresses from, and when you want to spend something that arrived onto your stealth address, you have to subscribe to a, a tag system, or like you have to parse the chain where you lost, stopped from, 
search for your public key, which of course only you can do, identify that it belongs to your original root meta address, and then you can spend your assets from it. But the problem is, yeah, the, where do you search these tags from? Currently, it's uh, an event-based, signature-based. We combining it with account abstraction, you can do it straight from your uh, account abstracted main wallet because the meta address itself is not a privacy issue if it's leaks because everyone is deriving their uh, or your stealth address is from the published meta address. So there is absolutely no problem. Just pin it into the AA wallet and uh, you listen to your events for your meta transactions or stealth transactions from your account abstracted version and you don't have to combine it with the rest of the events. It can also benefit from the guest sponsorship most easily. So if you remember, one of the big issues is that if I send you an NFT into a stealth address, you try to spend it, it doesn't have a balance for a guess. But once you start to fund it, you have a privacy issue because you just created the link between your main wallet and your stealth wallet. But account abstraction, so ERC4337 uh, has this guest sponsorship model built in, uh, which is truly amazing. And combining stealth wallets with the account abstraction system can benefit from both. And also account abstracted wallet can't just verify ECDSA using EC Recover when you have to authenticate your signer wallet, but additional forms of encryption, whatever fits into the gas limits um, of your implementation, and potentially means better post-quantum security too. Last one, I have uh, anonymous account abstracted group wallets, which literally takes two lines of code to verify. So the use case is that you are part of a group or you are part of a big company, you want to do uh, a group wallet, but you don't wanna expose which one of the group members is signing a particular transaction. You only have want to prove that you are part of this. This is the classic uh, Monero uh, ring signature model or the semaphore zero knowledge model. And if you have a verifier modifier, in this uh, account abstracted wallet, then you can off the shelf, combining it with semaphore proofs, have the best of Monero and the best of Ethereum in, in really just two lines of code. So you have kind of ring signatures, group signatures behind an account abstracted wallet with uh, semaphores. So as conclusion, as usual, when we introduce better UX, in order to achieve better user adoption into a technology that comes at the cost. And usually it's a security cost because they will always be at war with each other. This means that, yeah, user operations are great. You have to express your intent now. That intent has to be interpreted uh, somewhere and intentions can be linked to personal identity. So you yeah, have to be careful with those. And today's op uh, bundlers and user operation executors might become tomorrow's chain analysis or Google. But thankfully, zero knowledge systems uh, boomed really in recent years, both in terms of engineering capability with pro the VMs and the proving systems and developer tooling. Most of the times, I'm really thankful that I don't need to particularly uh, engineer with circuits anymore. In best case, you have access to a general purpose ZK EVM, an Ethereum compatible even. And for the use cases I presented here, you already have off the shelf solutions for ZK email, TLS notary to cover 90% of the privacy issues present now on account abstracted, uh, in the account abstracted ecosystems. So slides are online as usual. Feel free to uh, ask questions on the Telegram. Here, they might get uh, edited based on your questions here. Thank you very much for your attention.